know how this angle is going to look. I think I just might bolt him. Oh my god, I'm going bold! You are, dummy. Okay. All right, here we go. Corey, you just made the video. Hey, guys. Hi. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is, or continue today with this group, is now I'm going to define a way for us to measure the delta S of the universe. Why do I want that? If I can measure the delta S of the universe with an equation just using my system's values, because I can't measure the universe. can't go out to Neptune and say, hey, what's that stuff doing there right there? I can't do that. Assuming the universe is in some sort of equilibrium, all I want to do is measure my system's quantities and then relate it to the universe. That's what I'm doing here, okay? All right. So that's where we went. we're going to get an equation that tells me if the process is spontaneous, which means what? There is a pathway. It's allowable. There's free energy given off that I can do what? To do work with. Or the process is what? Non-spontaneous, and I have to add energy to make it work. Copper does not react with the hydrochloric acid. It's non-spontaneous. There's a reason behind that. There are some things that react vigorously. Remember, fluorine's good at gaining electrons. Gold was terrible at losing them. We had positive negative volts. This is, we're going back, we're getting to the specifics why redox occurs for some and it doesn't for others. We're explaining all of chemistry here. Okay, so real quickly, we talk about molecular disorder. I've got a gas here and it disperses. We're increasing the what? The entropy of my system by the gas going from a four molar solution, let's say to a two molar, okay? Even though this is not a chemical change, people in other classes will say what? Entropy is a measure of disorder. No, it's a measure of dispersed energy. An easy way to think is other oh, disorders increasing, but you're dispersing the energy. These guys are what? Pounding on each other. And now the pressure is dropped. Energy has just been what? Relieved there. Air in a balloon gets out, doesn't it, under pressure? Okay, now, this is where Tristan's having some issues. Let's think about water freezing for a second. Water is a liquid. It's a solid. Now, does water freeze? Absolutely. We've seen it freeze under a set of conditions. Therefore, sometimes water freezes and sometimes it what? Sometimes it's spontaneous and sometimes it's not. Okay, now stay with me. Let's assume the conditions are right for water to freeze. We'll talk about this after I define this. If water freezes, we're going from a liquid to a solid. What's happening to the delta S of my system as we go from a liquid to a solid and vibrates my fixed position? Decreasing, that's bad, isn't it? That's bad. Now, in order for ice to be made, think with me for a second. We're gonna go from what to what? A liquid to a gas. Think about this for a second. Here's a solid phase change liquid. If I'm going from a liquid to a solid, what's happening to the potential energy or the energy in general? It's going down. To go, doesn't liquids have higher energy than solids? Yeah. You should know a liquid going to a solid is exothermic. Heat has to be released. So wait a minute. If we're going to go from a liquid to a solid, isn't that bad? Entropy change? Solids have more structure. They're not as what? Independent as water molecules, so our delta S system drops, correct? The only way this works, if the heat released by the liquid can make the surrounding gas molecules do what? Increase, and that's gonna do what? So there it is. The surrounding entropy is enough to overcome, so the heat is the link to the surrounding delta S that we can't measure directly. Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay, it does get warmer when it snows because when you go from, by the way, snowing is deposition. Water vapor goes directly to a gas, the opposite of sublimation. So gas becoming a solid, you gotta release the energy. So it does get a little bit warmer. So here's what this is happening. Okay, now, continuing on, let's define this. All right, and by the way, the first person up in entropy, remember the guy who killed himself because no one believed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was the first to come up with a constant to describe the randomness of gas molecules. So his, this was his equation for entropy. 
And this is how many ways the gases can move times a constant, his Boltzmann constant. But it's hard to describe how many ways they can move, so we don't look at absolute entropy, we look at changes of entropy. Just like looking at how much energy is in this, how much energy is changing from one temperature to the other. So we don't really use that, okay? So entropy, we've been through this. So now let's get to our two, pro we can get these from tablatures, okay? Now, this is important. We have notes for this, but just watch for a second. Here's what I have. This is by far what I'm working from. Okay, now, I have a crucible, or I have a evaporating dish that I made a little fire in. This is clear in exothermic reaction, correct? Okay. Now, this Q is negative for the chemicals, correct? Q the right, because why? Because the Q is positive. Now watch what I'm going to do here. The Q, the energy that's being absorbed by the what? Ooh, surroundings. If it's negative for the chemicals, it must be positive for the surroundings. Been doing that for five or six days, yes? Feels like two months. Now, what do we have here? Delta H of the surroundings. Cool, enthalpy. And that's e equal to what? The negative delta H of the system. Now, what am I doing here? Pay attention, please. It is easy to measure this. This, I measure with tables. This, I measure with the what? Don't be a as. Okay, absolute zero zone. We measure the what? The total absolute entropies from my chart. And I can see that the entropy is increasing. If this is a liquid going to the gas, the delta H is what? Positive. Products minus reactive. So we can get this, which is the degrees of motion we learned last period. That's not an issue. The issue is how do we relate the surroundings, it's tied to the energy. So that's what I'm doing here. So if energy is released, the delta S is equal. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this go here. So delta H of the surroundings. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this at a constant temperature. This is important. By the way, for the Q of the reaction to equal the delta H, don't I have to be in constant pressure? This is important. Constant pressure means that we're dealing with, okay, a change where Q is equal to delta H. That's important, okay? Everything we're doing. We're not in bomb calorimetry. Now, I'm going to divide by T from both places. So what do I have here? All I did is I'm going to divide by, that's an equation. These are correct, right? We're taking the current temperature of the surroundings. It's not going to change because the surroundings are so big, correct? The room. And we're going to divide by that, okay? Now, if it was a thermodynamic quantity, it would be what? Negative, I mean, it would be 278 uh, Kelvin. I'm going to divide by both. Okay. Now, what we learn? We yes. learn that entropy is equal to what? Q at constant temperature over T. So, because this is really a Q over T, hey, what is that? That's entropy. Entropy of the what? Right. Now, I'm gonna, uh, before I do that, I'm going to say that's equal to the entropy of the surroundings. Okay. So, what did I just do here? I just solve for the entropy of the surroundings linked to what happens to the heat transferred to the surroundings. That's how we measure the surroundings uh, entropy. We can do this by tables. Hey, what are the particles doing? This is about the gas molecules on the outside, which is related to the heat of the system. But I have to be under two things, constant pressure, constant temperature. Hey. 99.999999 of all reactions are constant pressure, and most things occur at constant temperatures, okay? Now, what does this mean? So delta S of the surroundings is equal to, oh, I'm relating what? If this is equal to that, and delta S is equal to that, isn't delta S of the surroundings equal to the what? Delta H of the system. We are relating what's happening to a system's energy, notice the negative, it's the opposite, to the surroundings delta S. We have a ray, way of just looking at a system and now relating it to the entire what? Universe. Now, what do you think delta H over T is? Isn't that a Q over T? Okay. Isn't that actually the delta S of the surroundings? So there it is. Delta S of the system, what's that? That we get from the tables. That's what's changing the particles, absolute entropies. This 
we can relate to by the what? The delta H of the system, and that. So this party, people, this value is negative delta H of the system over constant temperature. So party people, knowing the particle change and my tables, and knowing the delta H change of my system, I can relate it to the entire universe. That is what's so powerful about this. This is by far the most important quantity that can measure will a process work. Okay, so let's continue on the next page. So what do I have here? We got this and this, we're almost done. So we're gonna take the delta S of the universe. We've got this right here. Okay, now I don't like this. So what we're gonna do is delta S of the universe is really what? Q over T, right? This is a Q over T of the universe. And this is equal to this. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna multiply both sides by negative T. Negative T over this, the T's go bye-bye, right? Negative T to this side goes what? This goes bye-bye, this gives me a negative T, right? So now I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative T to clean this up. And what we get is a negative value for this is equal to what? T goes bye-bye, but notice that the, 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 the negative sign goes positive, and now I have what? Negative T here. This is it. This is the granddaddy of all thermodynamic equations. One more thing we're gonna clean up is we're gonna change this delta at constant temperature and pressure. There it is. So, we measure the delta S of the universe, okay, to be the delta G, Gibbs free energy, and it is equal to the delta H of my system minus the temperature in Kelvin of the entropy of the system using its degrees of freedom. That's what that is. And what's so special about that is that if this is negative, which by the way, it really is, isn't it? Because it's negative T, right? If this is negative, this means that we're spontaneous. If it's positive, it means we're non-spontaneous. If it's zero, like this zeroth law, nothing's happening because you're at equilibrium. And didn't you learn that equilibrium is the death of a battery, the death of a reaction? There's no free energy, nothing's happening. Okay, so party people, how do we use this? There are two important rules here, okay? Everyone follow, you are given this value, this equation. By the way, you also in your reference tables have something called the Gibbs free energy of formation values in your reference tables. The tables that I gave you, if you have Gibbs any, I'll talk about that in money, but that's posted too, okay? Which means I can do products minus reactions, we'll talk about that Monday. Well, let's get into this a little bit. I'm gonna erase this, and I wanna talk about what this means. Okay, stay with me. Everyone follow me, I need you to follow me. Just, just nod your head yes and like you get this, even if you don't. Awesome, okay. Now I'm gonna get rid of this, we're good, right? This now represents this, we're good? Okay, stay with me here. So now comes the new, and this is everything in thermodynamics. Hey, at the end of the day, why do we study thermodynamics? To understand the flow of heat, to understand how chemical or physical processes work or don't work. If they don't work, delta G is positive. If they work, delta G is negative. Okay, now why is delta G negative if it works? Because, remember bio? Bio, we did this diagram, G. And if you have this, the delta G is going what? Hey, it's negative, spontaneous. That means you're giving off what? Free energy that you can use to what? Ride that pony, or what? Couple a reaction, we take the ATP and we use that free to make it, then we can couple something that's not. We drive a car, we use the free energy stored in gasoline to move the car. It's not a complete energy transfer because, bummer, okay? And guess what? We have this prop, delta to G, oh, start low, go high. This delta G is what? It's positive. By the way, we call that an exergonic, endergonic. We don't use those terms usually 
in, bio in chemistry. But in any case, this is positive. What's a great example of that? You have to what? Add energy, bring back our friends. Photosynthesis. Delta G is positive. You need free energy to make this happen. And who do we get it from? The light. Okay? All right. Now, so, granddaddy of all, here we go. The change in Gibbs free energy is equal to delta H of the system minus temperature in Kelvin, delta S of the system which is the tables, okay? It's the, it's that what? The particle free energy. Okay, here we go. Let's do the always rule, okay? Here's a, this, you guys don't have to do this video. They have so much more work to do. Sorry, guys, <laughs> we did it in class. Okay, now, if something is exothermic, what's delta H of the system? Is it going in or going out? Right, here's my system. Q is what? Q is negative because energy is leaving. So this gets a negative sign. Okay? Minus, temperature's in Kelvin here, party people, so it's always gonna be positive. I'm not gonna put a temperature there yet. Now, in the reaction I just did, when I burned a piece of paper, I took solid and it became gases. So what do you think the particle freedom, the delta S of the system increase or decrease? And I can calculate that from the tables. You could do delta, sorry, S of the products minus reactants, because you're starting from the what? Don't be an ass. Okay, if I'm here and I'm going to here, delta S is doing what? Increasing products minus reactants. Okay, that's what I get here. So when I burned a piece of paper, solid became gas. This became what? You need to know your signs. Entropy becomes positive when the particle freedom increases because you're going from concentrated to dispersed. <laughs> this is negative for exothermic. Energy is leaving the what? System. Now let's do our math. Okay, a negative minus a positive becomes what? Negative. Some people, I learned it to be plus the what? Negative. Right, you with me? So a negative plus a negative, right? Now it's a plus the negative. Everyone see what I just did there? What's a negative plus a negative always going to be? Always negative. This is the always rule. That's why combustion is so gosh darn spontaneous. The reverse doesn't happen. Unless... Okay, you're thinking that. Can't. Okay, what's the never rule? <laughs> the never rule. Let's take something where we're taking the energy from. Energy from the environment, which means the surroundings entropy is going to drop because they're going they're getting slower. So this becomes what? Positive. The delta S of the system, the Q is positive, constant pressure. Delta H is positive. Minus what? <coughs> Bless you. Now, in this, we're trying to go the opposite. I'm trying to make gas molecules become solid. If it was exothermic in this process here in combustion, it's going to be endothermic to go the other way. So I got the gases, I got to put them together, okay? And so my system's entropy is what? Negative, right? I'm trying to make gases into solid. I'm trying to concentrate it so the entropy decreases. And do your math. What do you get here? I do plus, plus, and what's a plus, plus, a plus always? Plus. Always positive. And if it's always positive, it is non-spontaneous always. If it's always negative, it's always spontaneous. Always. No doubt, nothing in between. And that's easy to understand, but we kept running into the, what I call, sometimes rule the something there's two of them the sometimes rule people you need understanding of these you guys please focus because you need to understand these charges okay now what's a sometimes rule okay let's do the sodium chloride dissolving we source sodium chloride 
becoming Na plus and Cl negative yesterday. And we saw the graph. It did what? Went down. It's endothermic. Delta H was what? Positive. Now, before we get started, I'm going to add something here. This is a fab. This is a fab. This is a favorable thermodynamic condition. So is this. Why? This is increasing the entropy of the surroundings. This is increasing the entropy of the system. This is an unfab. This is decreasing the entropy of the surroundings. This is an unfavorable thermodynamic quantity because you're decreasing the, the system's entropy. Now, if it's sometimes, one must be good and one must be bad. So let's do this. Hey, that's bad. Unfab, right? The dissolving of NaCl was what? Endothermic, bad. I have too many colors in my hand. Okay, now, what's this value? Hey, solid is becoming aqueous. Isn't that going to be positive? And that's what? That's unfab, sorry. And what happens here? Plus a what? Negative, right? So wait a minute. This is sometimes what? Favorable only when this is negative enough. So this occurred because the entropy was enough in the system to overcome the decrease in entropy. This positive, I'm sorry, this is a negative number now. This became a negative enough number to overcome this positive that did what? Made that occur, correct? That's important that you get that. So we call this an entropy entropy driven reaction and it worked what's the other one where is something exothermic freezing freezing is exothermic but wait a minute you're going from a what liquid to a solid what's this value so we get what oh it's sometimes but freezing occurs because what Freezing going from a liquid, higher energy, to a solid must be releasing energy. It must be exothermic enough to make this happen. And this would be called an enthalpy-driven reaction. By the way, isn't there a T here? Doesn't freezing occur when the T is small enough to make this positive small enough? Hey, one last thing. One last thing. I've got a liquid here. It's going to become a solid. It's going to become a solid. Back there, catch it softly. Back corner, catch it softly. Crickle, crickle the aluminum. Party people, watch. Okay, watch. What's happening? What's happening? The solid is there already. It was a liquid. It's a solid now. It was a liquid. Stay with me for a second. I got one more, I think. Okay, watch, watch, party people. Watch, I've got this super saturated solution. Okay. I'm right there. What's happening? What's happening? It's crystallizing. Am I going against the universe? It's happening, isn't it? But what's happening to my sign here? Correct over a liquid to a solid, what's happening to delta S? A liquid to solid, what's happening to delta S? Yes, it's bad. Yes? Now, what's it feel like? It better be hot. It better release enough energy to overcome the what? Right, it released enough heat to make the surroundings entropy Increase to overcome the loss of entropy as that became a solid. Anytime you've got freezing, concrete, plaster of Paris, okay, it's got to give off heat. Concrete gives off heat. It wouldn't become a solid. It's a sometimes rule. See you next week. That is everything in thermo.
It better get hot. It better be hot enough. It's gotta be tremendously hot. Don't take these with you, by the way. Don't think these like samples to give out. Okay, I'm okay. Like, okay, yeah, thanks. All right. By the way, what am I gonna do to return this back to the state? I gotta add heat back into it, and I need what? Free energy to force it to happen. This spontaneously occurred because it was so exothermic, it overcame the loss of entropy of the system, the sometimes rule. Guys, you're awesome. Thank you for hanging in there. Bye-bye, guys.